Hello ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to have a look at the Retron 77 by Hyperkin. I've been so excited about getting this console for ages. Being a big fan of the Atari 2600, one of the huge problems about that console is that it's RF out only. So as old tellies become harder and harder to find, we are getting to the point where an original Atari will no longer work on your modern telly. Plus, if like me, you want to record Atari 2600 game footage, that can be quite difficult. Hopefully with this thing, seeing as it's in HD of course, that problem will be solved. But before we get out of the box, let's read what it says on the back. Leave your platform shoes at the door and spend the night in with the Retron 77, the grooviest retro console from Hyperkin. It plays your favorite 2600 cartridges in beautiful, crisp 720p HD. It's one happening pixel party for the senses. Marvel at the slick wood paneling, save states, on-board mode select, and six-foot micro-cable to power it all. You take full command with the included two-button ambidextrous premium controller. Original joysticks and paddles are also compatible. Can you dig it? Well, that sounded pretty damn cheesy, but at the same time, pretty damn cool. Enough of the bullshit, let's get this thing out of the box. Well, would you look at that? They weren't lying about the wood paneling. Straight away, this thing does look really really cool. I do own one more Hyperkin clone console and I'd like to put it next to it for a comparison. The one you're seeing on the right is Hyperkin's Retron HD. Basically, it's a clone console for the NES. I've already done a full review on this console. If you would like to check it out, there is a link above. So then, as for the front of the console, we've got save, reset, load, mode, off and on, that would be handy, skill buttons, player one, player two, I'm guessing this means we can still use our Mega Drive controllers if we want to. This on the NES one, I haven't tested it on this yet, we will soon enough. This lights up when you power it on. At the back here we have color and black and white. Why would you want to see it in black and white? You'd have to have a serious hankering for some bad nostalgia there. Four by three and 16 by nine. <sighs> this button will be pressed once to make sure it's on four by three and then never again. This one's got me confuzzled. Fry? Okay, I'll have to look into that. And of course, your output and power. Here's the interesting one, memory. It does actually come with a 12 MB memory stick. So that's cool. And here we have the controller. While I'm not a fan of this, I have to admit, while it doesn't look great, it is more comfy. I will only ever use one of these buttons, of course, but this, that moves so, so freely with the gentlest touch of my finger I can move that. If I got my original Atari 2600 controller I would have to go like that to turn. Really have to give it some muscle. Not sure that's meant a screw so I'll just tighten that though. I'm very looking forward to trying this. I've never felt an Atari 2600 controller that made me move so easy. I wish they were all like this. So in short, that is the console out of the box. It looks very cool, it feels very cool. I'm excited to try all of its features. The controller also very cool. But the best way to test this thing out is with a variety of games. Now I've picked out a random selection, making sure all of the games are very different. In order to make sure this video isn't too long though, I will only play five games. And to make it that little bit more real, we're going to make a let's play out of it this time. So without further ado, let's power this thing up. Okay then ladies and gentlemen, before we get started, there's just a few points I want to mention. I've found out when setting up for this. One, the controller's lead is insanely long. That is awesome because original Atari controllers, the lead is normally quite short. Uh, another thing about the controller, the sticker that's on it, Starting to peel already over here. So, fixable, but a, you know, it's not a good impression, is it? <laughs> but it's fixable. Um, also, whenever I turn the console on, it goes into 16 by 9, so I always have to press the button to put it in 4 by 3. Bit annoying, but maybe with the help of save states and stuff like that, maybe you can fix it that way, although I wouldn't count on it. I don't think it saves settings in you know, preferred settings through the console. Uh, another thing, this is entirely my recording equipment. I want to put that by, 
while setting it up. No sound from the games were coming out. No sound at all from the console. So at first I thought it was the console. Nope. It's my recording equipment. This console has sound perfectly fine, but I want to point out that it, you will not get any through this recording because I don't know why every setting I do, it won't change it. The console doesn't like the recording equipment, vice versa, whatever. I can't give you sound today. I want you to know though, works absolutely fine otherwise. Plug it in your telly normally, the play it normally, you're fine. It's just if you're recording game footage the exact same way I am, for some reason it doesn't work and I can't explain it. So throughout this video there'll be music instead, just some light-hearted stuff. Uh, there was one other thing, ah yes, when you put, I'll show you a picture, when you put a game cartridge into the console it's not the way around you think. Normally when you put a cartridge into an Atari the artwork faces away and the game's name on top is readable. Whereas this has the artwork facing you and the writing for the game's name is upside down. I don't know why they've done that. The artwork's upside down so it doesn't look any better. And I keep going to put the cartridge in the wrong bloody way around so that'll take some getting used to. Anyway, that's enough of all of the silly little stuff that I've experienced while setting up. I think I've gone over everything. Uh, no, there's one little point I'll make extra actually. This console is American. I'm in the UK. If you worry about importing, don't be. Just do not use the plug. It comes with a plug that you can put the lead in, obviously. Uh, this is American. Do not use this. I'm not saying throw it away, I'm saying keep it in the console box and store that away somewhere. If you plug your console into your modern telly, like my one has a USB slot on the back, works absolutely fine. Today's uh, let's play the console is powered by the telly. There's no step down converters, there's no additional stuff to make it work in European territories. It's powered by the telly and it's fine. It's not overheating, it's not going to blow up if any of that crap worries you. You're absolutely fine. So, anyway, as said earlier, we're going through five games. The first one is that one you saw upside down a minute ago Asteroids. So, let's see if this works. <laughs> That controller already feels incredible. I'm not going to use an old school controller throughout this video. I'm going to use the equipment the console came with. The only thing I will say is the brightness is a little dim, but maybe that's me. Maybe I can change that quickly. This reminds me of how much I hate the fact there's no pause button on Atari's. Also, it's really weird not having any sound. I apologize for that again. Um, it's not the console. It must be me somehow, but whatever there's not even any sound coming out of the telly for it so that's why I really thought it was a console at first I've, I've had problems with recording before I've never had this one this is a new one so the action button on this is very loud but of course you could use the other one if you're left-handed no that doesn't feel right I can't do that funny thing is normal asteroids I suck at I can't do arcade asteroids Atari asteroids I've played this for so long that I've made the counter go right round. So what was that? 99,999. Whatever that was, I got ready with a camera to take a picture of my high score because I wanted to go into the um, hundred thousands. And as I'm ready to take the picture, yeah, the, the counter went all the way round back to zero. So I took a picture of nothing. <laughs> it would have looked like a really cool moment, but it looked like a really stupid moment, which I suppose fits me. Little tip for anyone who wants to play Atari 2600 and you're wondering when can you take a break in the game because there's no pausing. Well, for one thing, don't get hit by asteroids like that. <clears throat> when you get down the last asteroid, that's when you give yourself a little break. You can dodge that last one easy. If you're playing properly, which I'm clearly not. And of course, we got it on the easiest difficulty setting. That's a point we should try actually for the console. Let's try a different difficulty. First of all, reset. So I think I've put it on level four. It should be on level four. Whoa! Yep, the asteroids tend to change directions and stuff. Didn't level four have the uh, spaceship? Oh, I'm not going to be able to hear the spaceship if it comes. Oh no! Let's go there. It's okay. <laughs> Yeah, I do, I do really like this game, yeah, I don't like the 
arcade version. Anyway, as we can see, the console seems to work absolutely fine. I promise you the sound works. I'll give you a little demonstration at the end of this video to prove that it works without the recording equipment. I'll just have to have camera facing the television, which doesn't look very professional, but at least it will prove my point about the sound. Anyway, I think it's time we tried another game. And now, adventure. I'm very interested to see how this game plays because my daughter, my soon-to-be four-year-old daughter, this is her favorite game and she can ace this level, the first one, without any help from me. That's the, the maze and everything. She's done it in less than five minutes. She's not even four yet. How mad is that? Now then, reset. Oh, wow. Ooh. Feels like there's a bit of momentum in the game, which I'd never noticed before, mainly because of crap controllers. That looks so crisp. And on the recording equipment. Yay. We do, you know, level one on this doesn't take long to do, so we'll just quickly do that. I shall slay the dragon! No, I don't want the key yet. I've got another dragon to slay. I know what I'm doing. Incidentally, if there's any games that you would like to see done in a proper Let's Play sometime, let me know we make it happen. I would love to do a let's play of trying to get the easter egg in this game because I've never actually sat down and done it. So I would love to be able to do that. That would be really cool. Yeah, can you believe that my daughter can do this maze without any help from me? Again, not even four. And she's a very artsy girl. She's, you know, she's really artsy. But she's not the smartest thing out there. <laughs> Her brother's the, the clever one in the family. She's the uh, artsy cute but derp. Bye, Key. I'm looking forward to seeing the awesome, insane flashiness from this. That's when we really test what it's like for the whole Atari st style of things. Nope, not that way. My daughter can get it right. I fucking can. And... Okay, epileptic. <laughs> that was really cool. That is adventure. I thoroughly enjoyed that. I wish I could play it with sound, but of course when I'm not recording, I can. Next game is Ghostbusters. Now of course we've had to click 4 but 3 again, and it wasn't going to be Ghostbusters, we were going to play Mountain King. One of the five games I picked. Guess what? Doesn't work. I cleaned it, I tried everything I could to get it working. Maybe it's the cartridge. I'm hoping it's the cartridge, because that's replaceable. Console, I'm not going to replace it if it doesn't play up, it either works or it doesn't. So. Keep that in mind, one of the five games today didn't work. So now we're down to four. Hopefully those four will work. Anyway, Ghostbusters, let's see if I remember how to play this. Uh, by that, by that, by that, by that. Let's see. Which one's the trap? Is, it the, is that the trap? Guess so. And then to leave it's that. Oh, I know there's a way to get out of this menu. But maybe you can't do it in this game. Console. Oh no, wouldn't that suck? I'm sure it's not reset. I'm sure it's difficulty. Ah! Wait, I did it! Right. It was doable. It was me pressing the wrong button. It was the skill button. Although I swear I pressed that a minute ago and it wasn't having it. See if I remember how to play. Go over to the left. You stupid, stupid ghost. The left. The left. Because I can drag you with that and get you. Ah! So you know what I'm doing. I just hide it really well. And, and tech problems and stuff. Okay. Moves freely enough. I am really enjoying the controller. I am. And everything does indeed look... Oh, shit. Ooh, I got him. Everything does look the part. We've had the sound problem, but we're putting it down to the recording equipment, and Mountain King wouldn't work. But maybe my cartridge is just super filthy, and even after a normal clean, maybe it's just not working. I'll try it on another, uh, an official Atari 2600 console later. Let's go over a ghost. Hopefully it'll work then. Got ya! But if it does, if it does work on a normal Atari, then there may be a little problem with the Retron 77, so there you go. This is why we're trying very different games, very different types of cartridges. I think it's the best way to make sure things work. Oh, oh no, yeah, got ya! I'd be such a good Ghostbuster. 
I uh, no, uh. <laughs> Maybe I wouldn't be that good at Ghostbuster. Meh. Next game. Next game is E.T. Actually, no, I don't want to play that. Next game is Frogger. Give me a break, so I didn't want to play what is regarded as the worst game ever. Apparently. If you'd like to see a Let's Play of E.T., in the comments. Please don't. Oh, I know Ian's going to now. Nuts. Never mind, let's see what Frogger's like. Yeah. Eh, 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 eh. God, I'm good. Why am I good? I'll tell you why. This is a Sega game. Oh, maybe I'm not that good. Shut up! <laughs> why you go further? Uh, you know, I once did a big Sega Head episode on these games, but the footage would have actually been worse, because the only way I had to record Atari games back then was through VHS player, and that sucked. The big one. It was very hard to do. It was very hard to do, and it didn't always work. I'd take, put a game in and then try and record it with another game, and he'd be like, no, I don't like that one, I have no reason, I just don't. I think I'd be better playing this if I had a Mega Drive slash Genesis controller. The banana! Uh, <laughs> you disappeared the last second, I hate you! I know I don't need to do this level, but at the same time, I need to do this level. Ah, oh, I slipped! Poxy control! Ah, <laughs> oh, hell. Excuse the poor footage, but here's how we test that it actually makes sound. And there you have it. Without recording equipment, it works fine. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of GamePoke. Would you buy the Retron 77? Is it something you'd be interested in? Please let me know. If you enjoyed this video, please click like or leave a comment. And if you want to help out the channel, please click subscribe. It really does help. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.